This five acre site on the outskirts of Cardigan is about to be transformed. Left fallow for several years, it's just been given to an organisation that's dedicated to the ethics of permaculture and community involvement. The concept of forest gardening has been around since at least the 1960s, but because of the climate emergency, it's reaching a far wider audience than ever before. Cardigan's Forest Garden was founded by permaculture expert Alpai Torgut and his partner Claire Turner, who helps run a forest school. What is forest gardening? Essentially, it's meant to be like a natural environment, like a, a woodland. You've got all your trees and then you've got all your smaller plants, you've got your climbers that climb up trees, you've got stuff on the floor. So it's basically all the layers of a natural woodland except we plant fruit trees and nut trees and and fruit bushes and herbs to mimic the natural environment, i.e. a woodland. That is what a forest garden is. The benefits are quite profound. They can facilitate education for children and adults. They can increase economic activity in an area. They increase biodiversity, create, give more of a, a home for all the wildlife. It can be very spiritual. Yeah, all this came off first, so I've given it a prune. Oh, okay. And then you can do it. <laughs> and then you can plant something else underneath it. You can help people on their spiritual path. You, you can practice being present and connected with yourself and nature and the environment and other people in forest gardening when you're doing forest gardening. I was born in Cyprus in a little house, a one bedroomed house. And in this little house, my family, I lived with my family, my mum and dad, and my three sisters. We, we, we were rural farmers. There, there was nothing there really, no electricity, no gas, no roads. And from that, we, uh, I ended up in London. First my father came and then my mother, myself and my little sister went to London and my other two sisters stayed behind. There was a war going on between the Greeks and Turks, so there was a lot of fear and anxiety about, about war. So from that, there I was in London at the age of, sh of seven, which actually was very, very difficult. There was culture shock, mental illness. I think half my family became kind of mentally ill to some degree or another. I did a hell of a lot of holistic therapy to do with emotions. Um, and then I discovered permaculture and forest gardening. So all those things figure in what happens when I'm involved with creating a forest garden. I would like to say co-creating because it's a community enterprise, project, whatever one wants to call it. It's, it's all about co-creating it. I started NatureWise in London. I came up with the name when I was on, on the underground in under London, um, which I thought was very fitting, really. Um, given the uh, how large London is and how complex and how polluting and how everything really is too much of everything and that's at that point I became involved with permaculture and forest gardening in fact I, I organized 20 full permaculture design courses and in the process I, I met Robert Hart who brought Forest Garden into the UK. He, he, he's unfortunately passed away and now it's Martin Crawford who is doing a hell of a lot about promoting Forest Gardening, books, videos, uh, plant nursery. 
One of the main things was that uh, the first garden I was involved in that I co-created with the local community and, and associates was in the inner city in London, North Islington, which was quite, I believe it was the first forest garden in an inner city setting. This is the fourth forest garden in my life. All the others are, are, gave so much in the process of people coming together to create them. Shall we go to the front? Do you want to put it down for a bit? Yeah, let's put it down for a minute. My name is Michelle Kane and I make willow sculptures here in Cardigan and I just installed this willow stag for the forest garden with my friend Jeff. <laughs> Another volunteer and um, it's got a lovely metal frame inside so once this willow deteriorates, once this willow rots and gets old we can reweave it and hopefully it'll be a nice magical friendly presence to all the visitors and volunteers and hopefully the children from the local schools and uh, yeah it'll just add to their enjoyment in uh, the forest garden. Before starting the forest garden Alpi was a leading figure in the setting up of the Cardigan Eco Shop. The Eco Shop is providing the funding for this project and the shop has been going for nine years and is staffed by a dedicated team of volunteers who keep the shop open six days a week. About seven years ago we moved into our current premises which are quite large and, and really we have flourished and the premises are owned by 4CG which is a cooperative organization set up to advance community deve development through the regeneration of cardigan and surrounding areas and this has been a very beneficial relationship is it a wood stove oh, this, one, this one is yes um, you see that it started um just as, as coming in and uh, talking to them and then we it happened organically which is nice <laughs> because we, we suddenly started doing more and more. Uh, here are the new magazines that, for Eco. Martin, one of our volunteers, has been busy doing these, making these beautiful signs. Martin again makes these. He's involved with most of the tools, nearly all of the tools, I think, now. We do have a few other woodworkers. Yeah, we, we got some lovely crafts made locally with local wood um, lovely plates here by Tony Wrench uh, baskets by Michelle Kane a lot of the stuff also is donated of course and we sell for other people too locally made charcoal made at uh, Coppicewood College by Claire and Rosie cleaning pad uh, once you finish with it you can go in the compost it's a very unique situation that has enabled this community forest garden to happen. The, the Welsh Government has given us these five acres through a community asset transfer. The, the land is a very, very critical part of this project, essential in fact, so that, yeah. That is great that this has happened. We, we set up a, a community interest company and currently it's there are three directors, myself, my partner Claire Turner and Katrina Fothergill. Um, so there's three of us currently. Uh, and the whole point of a community interest company is to safeguard this land here for the future for the benefit of the cardigan and surrounding area and the environment, so it cannot be sold. That's what the community interest company is about. Mm -hmm. 
we we have a we have an emailing list of about 700 people so in a way we will be inviting people to join in with all aspects of this garden um, but what we're going to do is cultivate giving more and more access to people as, as they get to know the situation and they know how it all works and they can come here without us so we, we we're hoping to develop a lot of local trustees that will be able to use this situation so we're looking at optimum use of people getting the most benefit out of this situation which means developing trust with as many people as possible It was quite a process uh, getting this garden through putting in the proposal which uh, actually m my partner Claire did, um, all due credit to her and I, I did deal with the solicitors and that was quite something, it went on for four months and it, I was desperately trying to get it done so we could do some planting but then it's worked out really because we've done so much which you wouldn't notice, well the building you would definitely notice in the co compost glue. My name is Jamie and I'm a member of a, a worker cooperative called t Pren. Uh, we're based outside of Lampeter. Uh, we specialise in roundwood timber framing. It's low impact, hand tool construction using natural resources in the surrounding area. I got involved with this through uh, Coppicewood College because I've known um, uh, Claire for a while now and Alpi approached me saying that they had this community project in Cardigan coming up. Uh, it sounded fascinating as well to do that. Uh, and they wanted a, well the brief was uh, a garden shed basically at first um, but uh, my garden sheds are a bit different from other people's garden sheds so um, this round uh, roundhouse is based on a mandan uh, design which is North American so it has a, a rectangular frame in the centre going out to a round uh, henge which is different from the reciprocal frame roofs that we've seen uh, which have been pioneered by Tony Wrench in the local area Well, we like to use as many natural resources as possible uh, and ones that are in the local area and Cardigan's basically got everything on our doorstep. So uh, the timber uh, did come from our woodlands, so we're based just, just outside of Lampeter. Um, but the clay, uh, the stone for the dry stone wall, uh, the, um, the lime render, the sand, uh, the hemp, everything we use basically came from Cardigan. So it's a fabulous place actually for, for natural resource. did drain it which was quite something so we'll be uncompacting this land essentially because um, over the years I think it's become compacted anyway um, so but then all the trees and various plants like camphrey with their deep roots and everything will be breaking up the soil so we'll be enriching the soil I'm so happy that we this project is not dependent on a big grant the amazing thing about it is that the money's been raised by local people through the eco shop and the volunteers in the shop don't get paid including myself actually I don't get paid um, and I, I believe that creates more people get more involved they're not just there for the money they're not just there because it's been given to them for free um, and at the end of the day i think people will get more benefit if they if they're engaged seriously engaged and not dependent on external funding during the launch of cardigan's forest garden the mayor sean williams made a speech sean is also founder of 4cg cardigan's community enterprise scheme and by letting a 4cg building to the eco shop helped get it started sadly while alpi's introduction and sean's speech were being recorded the soundtrack went wrong, but Shan kindly re-recorded her words for us. What Alpai and the team have achieved is due to their hard work 
and dedication to the community and the environment. 4CG and the Eco Shop have been neighbours for around eight years now and it's always been a joy to visit the shop. The shop and the staff are a wonderful asset to the community and the town. If ever I need a hand with anything, I know that the staff in the Eco Shop are always ready to help. The Eco Shop team have worked hard for the community and the environment, but never seeking glory or praise for what they are doing, working quietly in the background without the glory, just doing what is right. The last two years have been particularly difficult for Alpi and the team, but as they say, every cloud has a silver lining. But in this case, this cloud had a golden lining. With that, I'm honoured to declare this forest garden well and truly open. I think when I first met Alpi and Seo and the Eco Shop team, I have to admit, I, I wasn't quite sure what they were about, but I did take to them instantly and I thought, yes, it, it's, it's something that would fit in well in Cardigan, the, the recycling and so on. And um, it was quite a few years down the line before I heard about their forest garden. And, and I heard little snippets about what they were doing. And slowly but surely, I started to become very impressed with what they were doing and how they were engaging with the younger generation, showing them where the food was coming from what happens when you plant things and how they can, can flourish and um, you know honestly I can't think of anything much better going on in Cardigan than the eco shop and the forest garden at the moment. I think it's quite uh, quite what's the word I'm not sure quaint that there's this community forest garden right next to all the business units i think that's great it, business should be more uh, environmentally friendly and there should be more general uh, involvement with each other it's a very profound practice uh, it's had a very profound effect in my life and continues to have a profound effect deep profound effect What's the term? Yeah, we're not we're not aiming for perfection, are we, Jamie? I don't. No. no. And uh, what? Do, it's not. Is it rough and ready? What's the saying? No. Rustic. Rustic. Yeah. Rough and rustic.